Hard to know. Okay, well, I think we are going live on YouTube. Not on the original um, post that I put up because I couldn't get that to work. It just said, uh, it said live streaming wasn't available. So here we are. I'm just doing another one and I'm recording it as a chat anyway, which will go out on the um, on the podcast and it'll be on my site at michaelcampling.com as usual. So I don't know what went wrong. I should have known. I kind of knew it would go wrong because video is notoriously uh, difficult to get right unless you're willing to dedicate half your life to uh, learning about all sorts of strange things. So anyway, here I am. I have got my, my Keep Calm and it's actually Sue, uh, Mrs. C's mug, Keep Calm and Drink Wine. <laughs> and I've, but I've only got um, a, a lemon and ginger tea bag in there. So if you sent me a a nice uh, mug of something by the coffee.com uh, button on the website. Thank you very much. And perhaps you bought me this one. So cheers. Very nice it is too. I should try not to make too many sort of noises and things um, as I do this because that would be annoying for people. OK, now I don't think I actually got any direct questions. I will just do a double check. This is all highly, um, highly disorganised, isn't it? I think maybe I should just go back to doing the... Uh, <laughs> the recordings as I walk around the field. <laughs> but anyway, I thought maybe say once a month if I uh, if I tried to do one of these things, it might be quite uh, quite interesting and could build up. Uh, so if I look at comments, uh, I got some nice uh, comments on the um, on the snippets that I shared the other day, which was nice, uh, and people sort of saying, "Oh no, I've just got into it and now." <laughs> Yeah, now I have to wait. Yeah, I'm afraid so. I mean, that's the nice side of the snippet is that you you get to see it before anybody else, um, and really before anyone, you know, even even uh, even Sue hasn't seen seen it yet. Um, she probably get to have a, a read of it soon. But um, I like to share things with people, and I do make the full snippet available just for the members of the site. So thank you if you've joined the site. There's actually something like about 450 people uh, who've joined, which is great. So thank you very much to all those people. I mean, there are there are many times more than that who get the newsletter. Um, but you know, people uh, people can do what they want, each to their own. Um, it, it's wonderful we get the support on the uh, on on the, the sending me a mug of tea uh, via coffee dot com, um, and that's wonderful. But you know, I'm not expecting it from everybody. And um, every now and then, I wonder um, whether I should do something like Substack, which, if you haven't heard of it, it's kind of a it's a bit like people who used to just write blogs are now writing email newsletters and they do two levels. They have the regular newsletter that goes out and then they have other ones which people pay for, you know, as a subscription. So, you know, you pay once a month, say, and you get this many newsletters rather. So some people um, do them once a week. Now, some people like I can I can really see that working for like Austin Cleon. I know is a is a kind of creator and he's written some really good uh, creative books. And he still does a newsletter and I, I've been getting it for ages and he just shares however many things that he's found interesting that week. Someone just sent me a message. Sorry about that. And um, yeah, and, you know, he's been doing that and doing that, putting all this effort into making content. And I think it's fair enough that he sort of then says, OK, here's an extra level of content that I can do. He's still doing the free one, but, you know, he's doing an extra one. Uh, which people pay for because he puts a lot of work into it and, uh, and it's only fair that you should get rewarded for that. Now with me, uh, my main work is is doing the novels and people buy those and that's kind of our relationship. The coffee.com, uh, mugs of tea and so on, are I think an optional extra. And if it got, if it got to a different way around of doing it, and this is why I didn't stick with Patreon I, I, or Patreon, however you want to pronounce it. I started it and then I kind of moved away from it because you get these different levels and you say, oh, you pay, you know, three dollars, you get this every month. You pay five dollars, you get such and such. And really, that's a whole different relationship uh, with you all. And. Yeah, I, I don't know, it would get to the thing where um, I'm then having to create a lot of extra stuff for a small number of people. And that would take me away from writing the novels, which is, I think, what everybody wants me to do and stories. So. Yeah, I, I could have put out extra short stories. Um, I'm not sure about that. I Who knows? I might still in the future do something 
I like that. If it's a lot of extra effort, say, I don't know, say I was to do readings, um, my impulse would be to do those for free on YouTube or everywhere and let everybody see them for free. And if you enjoy them, great, you know. But it, they're extra work, extra effort. Um, and I could see that could be a thing that um, perhaps you say, well, this is an extra product that I've made. Perhaps you'd like to pay a, a small amount for it. I, I'll see. You know, there's there's all kinds of different things that I could do. You know, a lot of authors are going on tic, uh, yeah, TikTok because there's this whole book talk phenomenon thing going on. I got an account. I signed up for it and I kind of had a look at it. Um, didn't really want to spend all my waking hours sort of thinking of silly videos to do. Nothing wrong with silly and entertaining videos. I just really ought to be writing books. Um, I might still do some. Um, you know, I like to have a, I like to have a joke and a bit of a muck around and uh, do silly things. And uh, I'm sure I could do lots of very silly um, videos on TikTok. But um, kind of, what would be the point? I don't see that it would uh, advance things. If I could do something related uh, to the to the work. Again, I'd rather put it out on my website. And if it's a special thing, it will go to the members. And if it's just a regular thing, everybody can have it. You know, I, I think I think everybody's trying to m do this awful phrase, monetize everything. And I don't think that's a particularly uh, productive thing. I know a lot of that might be heresy to some people, but I think it can stifle a lot of creativity. I think it can change the relationship uh, with your readers or your audience, whatever it is you're you're happening you happen to be making at that time. And for that reason, I'm out, as they say, um, from Dragon's Den. Um, yeah, it's it's not kind of the way I want to go. And I've, I've experimented with things. Often a lot of writers, a lot of indie authors especially, are very keen to try new things. And if we see somebody we admire and somebody we may have heard of or even met perhaps doing something, some crazy new thing, we think, oh, right, let's go try it, let's go try it. And that's OK up to a point. But as I keep coming back to, you know, what we should be doing is really writing stories, writing books, writing novels or whatever it is uh, that we should be doing. Um. Who knows what the future will hold, but I think that if I provide good stuff for people, they'll be pleased with it. It's kind of that simple, really. <laughs> so, yeah, um, don't quite know how I got onto that topic, but that's how these chats go. You know, I never know what I'm going to uh, to say till we start because it's a chat. You know, if you're talking to your mates, you don't you don't rehearse and write a script, do you? Well, I don't. I don't know everybody who does. I'd probably be quite worried about you. If you did, I think that might be um, a symptom of an underlying uh, concern. Oh, I hope, you, I hope the microphone isn't picking up too much of me having a sip of this uh, lemon and ginger tea. I try not to get these kind of noises. Um, I spend ages editing them out of the podcast version. Because, uh, you know, you listen to podcasts and with your headphones and things on, don't you? And uh, <laughs> and it's awful if you hear somebody, uh, somebody sort of clacking their lips together or whatever. I notice when I'm uh, when I'm doing the ones in the field because there's a lot of pollen around at the moment, and I'm marching about in a field full of buttercups and uh, and plantains that that uh, you know, scatters pollen everywhere, and of course it gets pollen over her head. But I noticed I was sniffing quite a lot the other day, and I just just little sniffs as I went, but um, the microphone picked it up, and oh gosh, I'd spend ages trying to cut most of them out just because I thought it'd be annoying, um, and really it's not going to be like that. So, um, I don't really have questions um, to answer. Hopefully, there is a, a chat thing. I'm using a bit of software here, uh, actually, on this, but because nobody has found the video, nobody is chatting. So that's fine. You know, these things are great for uh, some some people. I don't think it's really all that necessary. It was an idea. I thought I'd try it. I was hoping I would have a few questions in advance, but nobody seemed to ask them. I don't know what it is with people <laughs> who read my books. Perhaps they're just really nice, kind, polite people. And they say, I don't want to give him a load of extra 
work to do. I don't want to give him an extra whole bunch of things to think about. I won't ask him a question. He, he must get sick of people asking questions. Well, you know, I don't really. But um, but writers love being asked about their work on the whole. <laughs> it's one of those things. Um, I put that into, what did I put that into? Murder Between the Tides. Um, because if you haven't read it, I won't do any spoilers, but um, there's a writers' conference uh, by the sea, uh, Newquay in Cornwall, uh, where Dan and Alan are, and uh, Alan's a writer, of course. And Dan bumps into one of the other writers, and um, he said he actually says something, oh, you must be sick of people asking about your work, and he says, a young man, a writer, never gets sick of <laughs> talking about his work or something. But, um, but yeah. That was quite fun. I think I called that character, character Brian Cox, didn't I? I think I did. Or is it? Uh, anyway, I, I I did some play on it because um, because there's the physicist and TV presenter or astronomer or whatever he is and, and science TV presenter Brian Cox. And there's also the actor Brian Cox, who's been around a long time. And I once heard the actor saying, oh, you know, I turn up and people go, oh, we were expecting the other one. <laughs> oh, you're not the other one. Anyway, and so I think I called him um, Dr. Uh, Cox or something. I think he was called. Anyway, it sounds a bit vain when I, I'm not. It's not an affectation when I uh, when I can't remember necessarily a character's name. I'm. They do kind of stick with you very heavily during the writing and all the editing stage. You kind of live and breathe them, and then when you move on to another book, um, perhaps a year or two later, you become kind of tangled up with the latest characters you're writing and, uh, and you forget some of the older ones of the details anyway not the recurring ones I hope uh, not the not the regular residents of Embervale I hope I um, I hope I keep them very much in mind because they are uh, important I don't want to have them suddenly uh, changing even if they only pop up briefly um, so yeah th th there are some uh, recurring characters in this upcoming book and I do have to go back and check. And it's quite nice that I'm taking some of the minor characters from some of the earlier books and developing them a little bit. Now, I won't do spoilers, but they are particularly on the police side. Um, because, as I've mentioned before in these chats, that, that there is that element coming in um, to the book. Now, whether people will love both equally or like one more than the other, I don't know. I'm hoping that if you're keener on the Dan and Alan bits and, and, and less keen on the cases that the police are working on, um, it'll be okay and it won't spoil it for you. My chapters are generally fairly short. I, I don't make them too long. They, um, I try to keep the pace up and not let readers feel cast adrift. So that um, so what, what that is about is when I start a new chapter, I try and orientate the reader very quickly as to where they are, who, who the character is, um, and what they're up to, maybe what time of day it is, something like that. And I try and do that in the first sentence, really. First sentence of a chapter, I really try and orientate people. And I do try to vary those as well, so it's not always, uh, you know, somebody doing the same thing. I have to keep an eye on that on this book, because it's, I haven't quite got to that polishing stage yet. And by that I mean that's kind of... You know, you've pretty much got everything there, but you have a look through and you just do some niceties, really, just to make sure that things aren't repetitious or or overdone or overused. Um, typically, I would find something that I hadn't noticed until later on, like, say, a piece of body language that was repeated. You know, you don't want you don't want too many people um, raising an eyebrow, but it's quite easy to search through a document looking for raised eyebrows <laughs> uh, or whatever, you know, or uh, if there's a lot of chuckling going on or something, um, something like that, that, that you may, may have overused. So um, there will be that to think about. It will be a little while before the book comes out, but um, it is progressing and uh, I am more than halfway through it and it does seem to be holding up I've kind of um, because the plot is quite complex I've had to stop and 
I'll write down a few questions for myself just to say, you know, is, th is this followed through? And then we'll do a bit of a search. And so far I found that, yeah, those worries are ones that I've already had before and I have already fixed them. So thank goodness for that. I've not found a gaping plot hole at this point. I think hopefully I have got those covered already. But I, you know, never say never. There could easily be a gaping plot hole. It's amazing how easy it is to miss something until later on. And, you you know, you, you literally do feel like banging your head on. Well, I don't literally bang my head on the table, but I'm out of my head in my hands sometimes. Of how on earth did I miss that? It happens. It happens. And there's just so only so much you can keep in your mind at once. Sorry about the cluttered background, by the way, if you're watching the video. There's all sorts of... Uh, all sorts of stuff going on in there, isn't there? I must, I must do something about it. Since I switched to using a different computer, I find that I don't have a way of controlling this webcam that I'm using. It's just, it's new and everything, the webcam, and then I can't do anything with it because the software doesn't run on this computer, which is just great, isn't it? Anyway, <laughs> technology is wonderful. I love technology. I do, on the whole. Always been keen on it. Um like to try things out. What else have we got to talk about? Um, not much else, really, in the absence of any questions, in the absence of any ongoing chat. Perhaps if this is something I can keep doing, it could be an expectation. So today's the first of the month. Um, if everything is OK on the 1st of July, I could just um, I could just do a uh, do another live stream. Whether I would sh try scheduling it again, I doubt, because I couldn't get it to start. Um, it, I, I could try it, but um, it's kind of vexing, isn't it, when these things don't work easily. But podcast listeners will ha have no problems because this will be just as usual, only without the noise of birds singing in the background and Lottie huffing and puffing away. Or me sniffing, for instance. I hope. I hope. Um, I do want to do some more readings, actually. I mentioned readings earlier. I love reading my work out loud. I love reading other people's work out loud as well. It's something I did quite a lot when I was teaching. And it was kind of a, a skill that I discovered I had. I was very nervous of doing it because um, I went into teaching... I was older than most people. I didn't go straight to teacher training college. I'd done other things and I'd attempted a a bit of a science degree, which I didn't complete. It didn't work out. It was plant science and things like that. Interesting, but it didn't work out. Um, I made some crap choices, to, <laughs> to put it mildly. Some bad choices and uh, it didn't work out. Then I was a computer programmer for a while. I've had stints of unemployment as well uh, back in the day and uh, done all various things to make ends meet and then I became tr retrained to become a computer programmer I did that so that kind of feeds into Dan's background a bit because I, I worked in a corporate environment I worked in a financial for a financial institution which uh, uh, you know I was a, a small cog in a big machine but I know something of the atmosphere now it wasn't as cut and thrust as Dan's um, Dan's workplace. I wasn't high up. I certainly wasn't a troubleshooter. I was a, a lowly programmer. Um, but, um, you know, I know something of that environment and I know something of those pressures where where a lot of money is involved. You feel under pressure, you know. And then I, so that I did that. Then I retrained to be a teacher and went into that. And I can still remember the first time I was asked to read a story out to a class of kids who were sitting waiting eagerly for their story. And um, I thought, I've got to go for it. I've got to go for it. Because one thing I loved at school was I liked teachers who did the voices. I liked them to really put expression into it and to actually, you know, take on characters' voices. That, to me, that was a good teacher when I was a, when I was little. I loved it when they read stories really well and got everybody, you know, on the edge of their seat. And so I thought, I've got to do it. I, I, I you know, I've got to give kids that experience I had. So I just went for it. And... Uh, you know, I think everybody was quite taken aback, me included. And I thought, OK, I can do it. I can do it. And so I um, I worked at it and uh, it became something I I got not too bad at, uh, I like to think anyway. And, uh, you know, 
perhaps there's loads of kids somewhere who, if nothing else, remember remember some nice stories. And maybe they're probably grown up now. Maybe they'll read stories to their kids and so on. Hope so. Hope so. That would be a pretty good legacy to have uh, inspired a few people to read to their kids. That would be fantastic. It's a wonderful thing. Wonderful thing. Um, I'm sure I'm preaching to the converted here. I'm sure you're all very into books and um, and reading and reading to kids and grandkids and nephews and nieces and everybody who you can get to listen to because it is it is a wonderful thing whether you can do the voices or or, or not that's uh, no not for everybody perhaps but it's kind of adds something to it if you put a bit of a bit of expression into it i think so yeah i must do some and i will i will um i'll have to figure out the best way of doing it um i did kind of um buy a little bit of software the other day and a kind of a service which enables you to put audio products together so that might be one of these things that I can do and then put them on my website and maybe in a store if say you know it's a short story say you're reading a short story that would be like a free thing if it was a longer when I say short I mean very short you know the kind of thing that maybe takes 15-20 minutes to read or less and then if I did some of the longer ones that would take more effort and put together I might make a nominal charge for that say because you know if you want it you could have it I haven't really tried it yet we'll have to see how that works phew all these different things I come up with all these ideas and then I've got to find time for them all of course the uh, the focus is very much on getting this next book uh, up and ready which is why I'm doing this in it's the evening here it's uh, started around 7 p.m. and uh I've been glued to this chair most of the day, apart from taking Lottie out a couple of times and, uh, you know, pausing to make a cup of tea or, uh, or something to eat. I'll probably sign off there now um, because I think I've rambled on for long enough. If you do have questions or comments, then um, it would be great if you wouldn't mind going over to michaelcampling.com, Michael Campling is all one word, and you make sure you're a member of the site, it's free and it's easy to do, and then, you know, comment on the post. I will post this on the website. And it would be great if you could uh, comment on there. The only reason I say on there rather than YouTube is that um, if I have comments in too many places, I may miss some of them, whereas I can keep track of the ones on the website. I can see them on my phone. I've got a tablet. I can see them. I can look at them on a computer. So, you know, I, I can I can get them and I can see which ones I've replied to and which ones I haven't. Speaking of which, I must go and uh, go and reply to a few because there were a handful came in after the last newsletter. So I'll read them straight away. Then I, you know, I I, um, I sometimes reply immediately and then other day, if I'm busy, I've got you know, writing, whatever, I've got to get, say, I'll get back to those. I owe a few people some emails as well. I will get back to those as well. A little thing down there that sort of got a a uh, oh it's saying dropped frames okay well apparently we've dropped some frames so it must be I don't know perhaps they're down here on the floor I guess that's a YouTube thing <laughs> uh, hopefully the video isn't too stilted on the uh, on YouTube if it is I will abandon going live on there and I'll just record them we fairly rural area we are never going to get the mega super duper fast broadband um i think it's at the moment it is about as good as it is going to get so uh live streaming is probably not very big on the agenda uh for that reason if nothing else but uh, I, I will try and record some more videos some more audio and uh, we'll work out how to get that to you okay i will definitely sign off Thank you very much for watching and or listening. A huge thank you to everyone who's joined the site at michaelcampling.com. Really appreciated. Love to see your comments and questions. It's great just to have you along, just to, just to have you there and know you're there. Um, it doesn't involve any newsletters or anything. There's no obligation to anything whatsoever, but it does allow you to see the content that I kind of hide behind the, um, it's not a paywall, but I, I just keep it away from the general public because it's for us. And, you know, I don't necessarily want to share my photos with uh, the whole world. I'd rather just share them with the people who might appreciate them, <laughs> you know. 
uh, and of course you know exclusive snippets and so on just to quickly mention because this isn't a salesy thing but there is a 40% discount on murder between the tides in the USA and Canada on Kobo uh, Kobo which is a really great place to buy your ebooks also um, if you are a VIP member I believe you get the extra whatever it is like 10% off or something so it's even cheaper on Kobo um, that's it's in the beach ready reads section and I noticed it was down there it's something about these might keep you on the edge of your deck chair or something it's really nice they put murder between the tides as the first book in the carousel on there so good old Kobo thank you very much and it's also on 40% offer oh that the Kobo offer is for the entire of June also for the entire of June on the Nook uh, website, which I believe is just in the USA, because I, I think that's the only place they sell ebooks to, and that's 40% off Murder Between the Tides for the whole of June. And just because that doesn't cover everybody, I put a direct link on my own store, which is at the moment is a Payhip store. And there is a post on the site, michaelcampion.com. It's a public post, so anybody can see it. And it's there and it links to all the stores and it tells you the special offer code. And that also gives you 40% off if you buy it direct from me. And that is for anybody in the world. So if you'd like an ebook of Murder Between the Tides, it's a good one. I think it's one of my favourites, actually. I, I really quite like it. Um, it's got a bit of fun to it, a bit of good old sort of seaside hotel uh, mystery to it. And uh, it's kind of one of my favourites, I think, possibly because it's it's partially about writers and a writers' conference. So, yeah, I'd encourage you to check that out. The books can be read in any order, but um, at least I think they can. I hope they can. I, I aim to make it that way. They're not a serial as such. They make more sense in order, perhaps. But it doesn't matter. They're, they're all separate. Each case is separate. And when I make a reference to an earlier case, it's a very oblique reference. It's it's kind of almost like an Easter egg. If you're in the know, you'll think, aha, yeah, I remember that. I read about that. But it won't spoil anything. Uh, I try very hard not to do that. So, yeah, it's, it's out there for 40% off for the whole month. Um, I don't do those sales in the later books very often. A study in Stone, of course, is free and is available everywhere. I hope. OK. Oh, and the audio books are out there as well, but only for Valley of Lies and A Study in Stone. Um, not much you can do about the price of those. They um, they often, uh, some of them, they let you set, some they don't. I tried to get a special offer for it recently for Valley of Lies and it didn't get accepted. So I will try again, but um, they are probably cheaper than a lot of the big audio books that you get anyway. OK. So thank you very much again and thanks for your encouragement, support, kind words and for your cups of tea. Hooray. Big, big thank you to, to you, my generous supporters there. Really appreciate it. And a huge thank you to anyone who's told family or friends or anybody like that about about the books. If you've enjoyed them, uh, that's wonderful. If you spread the word, that really helps. Really appreciate it. Um, I like to read books that way. You know, somebody recommends a book. And I, yeah, I'll try it out. And uh, thanks very much. All the best to you. Take care. Look after yourselves. And I will say goodbye.